Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you'll know that 20th Century LEGO is my true wheelhouse. Nonetheless, today we're taking a look at something new for 2024. This is Fabuland 2 Animal Crossing. Fabuland was originally launched in 1979 and was home to almost a hundred sets over the span of a decade. Yeah, you heard that right. Fabuland had a longer run than Generation 1 of Bionicle. Even Ninjago only recently eclipsed Fabuland's legacy. But now, Fabuland is back! While it's amazing to see a continuation of the series, it's somewhat disappointing that the LEGO Group chose not to put the old logo on the boxes themselves, instead opting to use this subtitle, Animal Crossing. It's a minor nitpick, but it does give the sense that this new series is more of a reboot than a sequel. This philosophy carries over into the set design as well. Obviously, most of the original molds for Fabuland's pieces have long since been destroyed, but let's juxtapose certain elements to gauge the progression from then to now. Starting with the characters, we notice a few differences right out of the gate. Firstly, the Fabuland 2 figures are based on the minifigure body design, whereas the originals had their own proprietary configuration. This change makes a lot of sense to me, as we haven't seen that original Fabuland figure construction since 1989. or. 2000 if we're feeling generous. The new figures do lose the excellent neck articulation of the old ones, but gain several other vectors of movement, most notably wrists. The use of minifigure bodies does lead to some noticeably different proportions when compared to the originals, but I still think it makes a lot of sense to do it. So why didn't the original Fabuland figures do the same? Well, keep in mind that the minifigure as we know it today was only one year old when Fabuland was released. In addition to it being entirely possible that Fabuland's pre-production predated the finalization of the minifigure design, the minifig itself was a completely unproven concept at that point in time. I think it was wise for the LEGO group not to put all of their eggs in one basket, and instead diversify. Fabuland figures do unfortunately lack some of the customization available to minifigures, with heads and legs being firmly attached. These figures aren't meant to be disassembled, but those determined to do so will always find a way. The legs are attached with this red peg at the hip, which has retroactively become humorous if you're familiar with the dreaded red two-length axle in Technic's later years. Fabuland was dealing with red two-length axles before you were born! One callback that I really appreciate is that the new Fabuland 2 figures keep the watery eye design of the 1979 Fabuland figures, rather than using the cartoon eyes of the later years. It's a small touch, but really helps to illustrate the continuity on display here. This might not be your parents' Fabuland, but it is still Fabuland at its heart. On that note, let's take a look at the build itself. For our review today, I have set 77049 Isabel's House Visit. I'm thrilled, by the way, that Fabuland 2 kept the concept of named characters, with the box telling us who's included in the set. I do think the names themselves are a bit of a step down without the charming alliteration, but again, this is a nitpick. We can definitely see a pretty stark departure in box design from the originals, but this is to be expected. 45 years is a long time. What I was let down by was the instruction manual. Fabuland pioneered a style of storytelling with the characters themselves showing you how to build the set. This marriage of narrative and guidance is something that modern themes, such as LEGO Dreams, have ineffectually attempted to emulate. It's sad to see these Fabuland 2 sets not even make the attempt, when it was once one of the trademark features of the original. Oh well. At least once everything's constructed, we can see we have a real winner on our hands. While containing an order of a magnitude more pieces than even the largest Fabuland set of yesteryear, the final result is still charming and strikingly true to the original. My favorite detail is the curved red door held on with clips, a near dead ringer for the designs of 1979. The windows of the house are modular, and two options are presented. I like the look of the curved frames, but I wish they had come in red instead to better match the door. 
The inside feels a little more cramped than cozy, but I do appreciate the vast amount of furniture and interior definition visible here. Fabuland relied heavily on stickers in the past, but here I'm happy to report that all details are either printed or brick built. A sensible change. An interesting departure is in the foundation of the set. I say interesting because I'm not sure if I like it or not. Previously, larger Fabuland sets would utilize traditional base plates, but here we see a sort of modular rounded plate system. I certainly get what they're going for, but I'm not sure I'm a fan of the large gaps it leaves in the layout. One thing that I am a fan of are these trees. What an amazing brick-built homage to the original design. This new tree stump mold looks like it would be great recolored as spaceship thrusters one day. Overall, I think this is a really great next step for Fabuland. There is some measure of deviation from the norm, to be sure, but I feel that the majority of these decisions were practical and positive in nature. Fabuland is out of hibernation, and it has a whole new spring in its step. Thanks for watching, everyone. Once again, this video was brought to you by the folks who support me during the Summer of Slug. They're the ones who make videos like this happen. If you want to join their ranks, please consider heading over to either my Patreon or Coffee page and contributing today. We've also been hard at work constructing all sorts of things in our Minecraft server. Valuable infrastructure, recently gentrified neighborhoods, and even statues to honor some sort of idol. If you want in on the fun, check the Patreon link in the description. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time. Wait, there's a game? Are these, are these sets based on a game?